so wiggly. Wiggles. Stop wiggling. Oh. Everyone's fallen. Come on, everybody. Come on. It's gonna be all right. It's so gold. <laughs> <clears throat> I think I'm supposed to start. <laughs> okay. Hello. I'm Chelsea. I'm going to teach you the art of felt. Woo. If you like art and you like octopuses and you like things that are extremely tedious, then you will probably appreciate this video. Where is he? that we're gonna make yeah <laughs> if you purchased one of my octopus kits thank you so much appreciate you if you didn't well, that's cool too i guess whatever uh the link to purchase one should be down below eventually when i can get it together um i don't know when that's gonna be but you can subscribe to my channel while you're there I'm so goofy and awkward. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be felting an adorabilis octopus from start to finish. You don't need one of my kids to do it. You just need wool, felting needle, felting surface. We'll go over all that in a little bit. HK. Oh my gosh. Um, it's beginner friendly, but you can take it wherever whatever level, however far you want to go. Um, you could do multiple colors, uh, different faces, felted eyes as opposed to glass. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just like make it thick. Anyway, uh, intros <laughs> give me anxiety. <laughs> so let's get started. mustache okay bye <laughs> for now i'll be back in two seconds i need to edit this out <laughs> okay here we go here we go does it look good i don't know whatever Okay, so I am going to review what's in your kit. So let's check it out. Here's the kit. Um, this one I've kind of already opened because I never close it. <laughs> there are actually none of them are done yet. So inside you will have a felting pad that I made. It's all wool. Um, I hand, I mean, I not hand sewed it. That would be crazy. I machine sewed it by hand. Um, these cords are really annoying. Sorry guys, this is clearly my first video. So welcome to my first video. Is it jiggling? It's not. Alright, so. Uh, here's our guy again. He's so cute. So this is my own design. Um, I'm happy for you guys to reproduce it. Uh, I love to share my knowledge and whatnot. Uh, but it would be great if you end up selling them to please credit me. Um, Kiki Crafts. So. Uh, in here, we've also got na, 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 na. wool. So the blue is going to vary. I locally source these uh, from New England. 
area where I'm from. And the colors may vary depending on what I can get at the time. Um, these are in, this color is in some of them, but I also, I just sort of ordered, I thought what I thought was the same thing, but it's lighter. Um, so it may look like that. I'm also going to have purple ones. So here's the purple one, but I got a prettier purple that I, I'm probably going to use from here on out as long as, ooh! <laughs> uh, dysfunctional as long as I can get it it's so pretty so um you get a half ounce of whatever color which is enough to definitely enough to make one octopus if you run out of wool then you are using way too much so that is one of the things that beginners run into a lot of the times just not knowing how much wool to use, using way, way too much wool. Um, it's way easier to add something than it is to take away. So always go small. And I teach painting too, so that's what I always say to people when I paint. It's kind of cool. Everything kind of flows together. Anyway, you'll also get accent colors. Um, so this is a cheeky color. Everything's locally sourced from this area. Um, and I pick up at fiber fairs, things like that. Um, yeah, so what do we got? The pad, the wool, and then you'll also get the felting pad is all wool. Um, I fill it with recycled waste from my own work. I have so much. So you'll get two toothpicks just in case you need more than one like it breaks I don't know pick your teeth with it <laughs> while you're felting um three needles these are 38 uh no 36 36 triangle needles which are just a middle of the road average beginner whatever needle there is a bunch of different gauges of needles. I'm not going to get into it in this video. I just want to show you how to make this octopus. And um, I'm on a time crunch. But um, there's a wealth of information about needles. And if you guys are interested, let me know. I'll make a beginner sort of technique tools video. Uh, that just reviews the, the basic basics. Um, you know, what needles to use when. What the gauges are. Uh, 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 types of wool, types of fiber, what each one is good for, etc, etc. So, um, this looks so cute. <laughs> this is it. This is what we're making today. <laughs> so you have seven millimeter glass eyes. Um, if you crochet, they're different from safety eyes. They're just the ones with like a pin in the back. Yeah. So can you see that? My makeup tutorial moment. Look at these nails. I don't know how you girls are out here doing this with cute nails because it does not happen for me. All right, so don't lose these eyes. I'm only giving you to listen. I ain't made of money, honey. So two eyes is all you get. All right, so that's everything in the kits. Pretty simple. Um, and I'm going to show you now um, how to do it. Uh, additional tools, I should suggest. You maybe need a ruler um, just so you don't have to eyeball the measurements of how much wool to pull off, etc. Scissors, I don't know. Trim some fuzzies at the end or if you have a serious, serious issue. I never recommend cutting stuff off, but sometimes it has to happen. Yeah, so these are nice springy scissors. Um, this is from Serafina Fiber Art. She's amazing. Uh, it's called the Zuli Tool. You don't need this. It's just nice to have. You could use, I don't know, any anything that you can wrap. Um, you know, big pair of scissors, uh, big size Sharpie, <laughs> literally anything you that's about an inch wide that you can wrap. Even your ruler. My ruler is pretty thick, but some rulers are about an inch wide. You could wrap the ruler, so um, that'll make more sense when I... I, just, I don't know why I got a slurp. 
just <laughs> what we gotta do. All right, so uh, to start, I've kind of unraveled. If yours isn't one continuous piece, that's okay. Um, sometimes I have to break it in half or it just comes split. So uh, this wool is really nice for felting. It's just a great feltable texture. You can kind of see the staple is really short. So what is a staple? Well, um, something with a long staple is going to be harder to break apart or pull off, not break apart. Uh, here's merino fiber that I have. Convenient. Oh, wiggling again. Conveniently near me. Um, this is a long staple fiber. So when you pull it apart, you have to pull. See how strong it is? You have to you can't pull it apart from close. You have to pull it apart from out here. And see the long, that's a few inches of staple. So that's a term that I'll use a lot. Um, short staple fiber, kind of crimpy and fuzzy, right? You can really see the difference on the ends here. But look how it just pretty much comes right apart. It will be hard to pull off if you're really close like this. This is not gonna be beneficial to you. If you have to pull fiber off, start out here you know and then it'll pull apart somewhere in the middle of that okay that's another thing in my workshops and stuff like that where people have trouble pulling the fiber apart in the beginning until you figure out how to do it right yes okay so we're gonna start with what i call core wool um and we're going to be working in 6 to 10 inch chunks split in half. So this is why we've got our ruler. Um, and then it, we're 6 six inches. I'm going to go for 10. And I may not even split this in half because it's narrow. So you'll see when you unravel this that parts of the roving, this is called roving. Well, roving is just um, when it looks like this. Uh, kind of like a thin, long log. Yeah sounds weird but parts of it are thicker than other parts so when it's really thick if you get something that's really thick then you're gonna split it down the middle right but um i don't have something that's super thick so i might not even split mine down the middle when i'm starting um i'm gonna do it anyway just to show you how to split it down the middle because there's a way to do everything that makes literally everything that makes it easier right so again i'm, I'm measuring 10 inches pulling it off 10 ish inches great look beautiful when you split wool in half you're holding it horizontal right you're gonna flip it vertical and then we're gonna just grab it from the middle and pull it apart and that'll give you two equal pieces mine was thin enough so I don't really want to do that but if you have a really thick piece what you're gonna do is gently start pulling it um, from the middle and uh, stretching it out. So this is called woo, drafting the wool. So see, I overdrafted there. That's an overdraft. Overdrafts my bank account. <laughs> <That's> a, that, <laughs> anyway, so you're going to pull it apart. Yeah. Um, you don't want to pull it apart so much that it comes apart. It might happen. That's okay. In that case, you can just draft it out a little bit. So very, very gently holding it in one hand, sort of working it along the... Um, length of the roving and see how it got longer so now that half inch uh five inch piece that i accidentally made is now 10 inches majestic all right so drafting the wool is super important this will keep you from getting too clonky and chonky where when you don't want to be right so thick and just chonky parts and thin parts if you don't draft it out evenly then you're gonna have a harder time getting things smooth work so um i've got my piece i mean yours won't look like this let's start over because mine's a mess all right so six to ten inch piece pulling that much off um, mine's kind of skinny, so I don't need to have it, but I am going to draft it out. Longer piece like this, you want to draft just gently. All right, voila, and now my 10-inch piece has become, I don't know, it's wicked long, right? So, 
I'm going to take whatever I'm wrapping popsicle stick, uh, scissor blades you could wrap. I've used um, anything that's maybe about an inch wide. Uh, and you're going to take your wool. And I'm right-handed, so I apologize to my lefty friends. But Sarah Fina is left-handed, so she'll wrap. She always wraps away from her, but the opposite direction. So I always wrap away from myself as well. It's just easier, better practice. When you're pulling it towards you, it's really, really awkward to do that. So always, always when you're wrapping anything, take um, the end of it, pinch it against whatever you're wrapping it around with your thumb, and then wrap it away from you. Okay, so I'm going to go up this thing. And then I'm going to stop and then I'm going to go back down almost like a crisscross and then you can go back up. The tighter you wrap now, the easier time you are going to have felting. You don't have to felt as much, right? And this wool is so fuzzy. You see how when I kind of keep going with my hand, it just sticks on the tool, right? So this is going to be the body of the octopus and basically what we're doing is sculpting. Felting is sculpting. Um, it's just getting it to the point where it's sculptable. Clay immediately you can um, shape it with your hands, right? But this is not, like you could almost, like if you roll this in a ball, you can get a little bit of a ball, but it's not going to become sculptable until it becomes firm. How does it become firm? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> All right, so each felting needle that you have, or felting needles are very specific, um, they have, can you guys see that? I don't know, my old crafting hands are just so grody. All right, but there's barbs on the end of the needle, right? You can feel them when you go like this. These needles are wicked, wicked sharp. Um, I do not re recommend this for children at all. It's sharp. It's really sharp. Sharper than sewing. I teach sewing to children <laughs> and, and they poke themselves all the time. This is not a nice poke. It's a really painful poke. Um, you can get finger guards. If you're doing this with your uh, tween, tweens are good enough. They're dexterous enough to do something like this. Um, 10 and up, but they need adult supervision. It's just so sharp. So, the barbs in the end of the needle go like this. You can feel them. Um, and if you were to look at wool through a microscope, uh, it has barbs in each fiber. Human hair is smooth. Um, other animals have smooth hair. Um, but sheep in particular have barbs in each wool fiber, right? So when you poke, and I'm poking to the side of my tool, with the needle and when you poke you can hear it right can you hear that ah oh, that's the best sound and what's happening is see it depress where i poked the barbs in the needle are catching on the barbs in each wool fiber and knotting them together the more that you knot them the firmer your sculpture is going to get so the reason i included this cute little guy um you can squish that this is the this is what i want you guys to try and get to if your felt is too loose your your octopus is gonna look like poo all right so you just need to felt to this point when you're squeezing it from the top not really from the side that's a little bit squishy but from the top you want this kind of firmness it's like when you're testing the doneness of a steak right so it should feel something like this you can go a little firmer than that you don't want to go so far that you can't even get your needle in right it's too firm there is such a thing as too firm i think i have um do i have totoro hang on i'm gonna smack the camera again probably but i want to show you that something that's too firm so you guys can sort of visualize in your minds what i mean by that oh my slipper fell off Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, so this is one of the first things I ever made. Well, it's so hard. Like, it bounces, <laughs> right? And it's, I used two different colors and I couldn't say. I don't know what was going on. But it's he is just so, he's rock solid. As opposed to this guy. See, you can, 
And depending on what animal you make, if you want to make it soft, I don't know. I don't know. I could go on, but I should, we should start felting this octopus. All right. Anyway, I just wanted to show you, you know, you're not trying to make a rock. All right. We're trying to make an adorabilis. Um, and they are so cute. And they're also called uh, flapjack octopuses because they're small and squishy, I think. I don't know. They look like a pancake, maybe. Anyway, I'm felting on the tool. I'm, I'm not hitting the wood, right? I'm just felting a little bit so it stays together. Um, don't, don't hammer in like this, guys. Look, the, the barbs only go this far. So why would you poke all the way to here? Yeah, this is just gonna end up breaking your needle. You only have three, so sorry about that. <laughs> all right, when this is ready to be pulled off, um, you know, I don't wanna pull it off yet. I don't wanna pull it off yet. I need more, more meat on this octopus. More octopus meat. So I'm gonna take another piece. Six, I, I said six to 10, but I, but depending, m mine is thin, mine is thin. So I'm gonna um, work with probably 10 to 12 inch pieces. All right, so I've got two like that. Use your judgment, okay? We're wrapping it away from me, wrapping it back down, turning it in my hand to get those fuzzy, fringy ed edges in. And then we're gonna felt a little more. Sorry if I keep hitting this cord. I didn't really plan this right. <laughs> Um, let me get these. I don't know why I make that noise. Blah, blah, blah. Here. <laughs> so this is looking a little better. And it shrinks as you felt it, right? So you kind of want to overcompensate for that shrinkage. Um, it'll shrink a little little bit. Uh, if, you, if you didn't wrap tight enough, it will shrink a lot. Okay, so I'm taking another piece because mine are skinny. Listen, girl, this is crazy. Okay, so maybe that'll help. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. I do that a lot. So I'm wrapping away from me. And then we wrapped around about two and a half inches vertically on this. Maybe even three. Our octopus is about two and a half inches tall. Okay, real tight. Tight, tight, tight. Starting to get bigger, so. Tight, 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 tight. tight. And this is what I have left. I have about 25% left. Um, you don't need a ton for the tentacles, but you want to make sure you have enough. And the ears. So I'll probably only take a little bit more. Uh, depending on what you had. Uh, and then you can kind of see. Here's the deal. Oh my gosh. I did not plan this through good but we're in it we're in it now Shit, what if i put it around my back no i hate this ring light all right um i'm probably not gonna edit this video because i'm trying to get these kits out so if you need <laughs> if you can't stand the jiggling um is this ring light it has it has these long long legs that just extend out so unnecessarily okay that looks better i'm a noob at this whole filming video doing things type things so i apologize but we're gonna get the job done okay so Felting a little bit on your tool. When you hit something, just just bounce off it. Don't 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 force it. Right? Just just gl glance it. Bounce off it. All right. Now I have my octopus wally pop cotton candy stick thing. <laughs> You're gonna take your shape, your base shape, and pop it off. You can see in my hand, it's about the size of an egg. And they are very egg-like, right? So when you pull it off the tool, you have one end that's floofy and hairy. And then you have one end that's uh, more blunted. And this is what happens when you wrap it on basically anything. And this is the part that you're going to attach to the legs, 
right? And then this is the part that's gonna end up being the head. So I'm gonna take my needle and I am going to choo -choo -choo stab down. So here's the thing. The direction that you stab shapes the shape, right? So if you want, um, let me show you. I'm gonna draw a picture because I'm extra, right? So here's my notes, right? Um, this is the shape that we're kind of going for for the head, right? So if you have a shape like that, where would you stab it to get it curved? Right here, here, and then obviously on the top. So you want to stab it so it's firm and then start shaping it. And you're going to come in kind of at all, all directions. So this is the angle of your needle. This is the angle of your needle. This is the angle of your needle. And then these, in, even in between these sort of micro angles, right? Boop, 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 boop. Like a rainbow, get it? And then eventually you're going to end up with something that's either round or mostly round. Um, and that's how it gets done. So there's a lot of loose, squishy fiber up here. So the first thing I'm going to do is stab straight down in. And you want to felt on the pad. <laughs> I'm a huge air filter. I'm always holding it and I'm always, always, always stabbing myself, right? So that's stupid. <laughs> the pad's there for a reason, right? But be careful when you're going to see it, you go through and then you just get, you just get yourself. Um, so eyes on the prize, especially when you're starting out, right? So here's that square shape that I had. And now I'm going to start poking at those angles. Yeah, so down like that. And then on the other side, down in like that. And you can see it's starting to get where we want it to be. And if you wrapped it well enough, you really don't need to stab it that much. But you want to make sure that everything's secure. Sometimes you'll end up with a line like this from wrapping it. So a great way to get rid of those lines is to come in at an angle just at the surface that'll trap some of these fibers and bring it over any of those lines that you might have right and the more that you stab the more this is going to go away uh these lines and then the uh softness and squishiness like you can see it's starting to get real nice nice and firm. The area that you want to be the firmest is going to be the, ooh, I never glued these eyes in, <laughs> is going to be the face, right? Because when you put the mouth in and the cheeks on, if it's not firm enough, you're going to get dense, right? And we don't want that. So choose the side that's going to be the face that looks the nicest maybe um, to you and then stab that extra. Make sure you get that good. The back is okay. The more you handle something like this after it's made, it's going to get fuzzy again. So I don't recommend this stuff for, like, they're not toys, right? It's art. Um, you can't give this to a little kid and, and think that they're going to play with them. I have made things for little kids and I've made sure that they're strong and um but eventually just the nature of the material right it's gonna get fuzzy again if it's handled a lot so there's that just how it is right so that's actually looking pretty good I wrapped that really well um I don't need to felt it much you may need to felt it more remember we're gonna squish this and um gauge the situation right yay okay so here's the body um i am going to plop that over here and now we're gonna get to the real tedious part of the leggies um so the leggies are annoying <laughs> to me <laughs> If you buy an octopus from me, you'll notice there's always only seven. Uh, and that is because 
I don't want to do eight. When I make these, I make them five at a time, sometimes six at a time. And obviously, if you can do math, I can't. But if you can do math, then you'll know that there are a lot of legs and it adds up. So I just do seven. And this is where your toothpicks are. Sorry if I'm like slurping. I don't know why I'm like, I need some water, I think. Oh my gosh, okay. Let's get it together, Chelsea. Here is our toothpick. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how much you wanna do for the legs. So we can return to our ruler here. Uh, I have little pieces already. I think I'm going to put these to the side and save them for the ears. Uh, so, I don't know if they are ears. Flippers or <laughs> Yeah, I think they're fins, right? Propel the octopus. Um, so, four, I'm going to say four inch piece off your main chonk there. Uh, split lengthwise evenly into four. So split it in half and then split this in half again. Your legs can get thick really easily. So we're looking at uh, pieces that are the size of my skinny pinky, right? Um, and uh, about twice as long as my skinny pinky. So they end up, the four inch piece ends up being eight inches when you pull it apart and then draft it out. I was texting you about the heat. Heat. It is so, so cold. Um, I do not like when people arbitrarily talk about the weather, but man, it is cold here. Um, it's crazy cold. So, <laughs> we're cold. <laughs> All right. Any, anyway, enough about that. Um, I have enough for four legs here so I'm gonna show you a few on camera and then I'm gonna do the rest off camera because who wants to sit here all day and watch me make legs yeah so we've got our piece here draft it out a little bit we've got our toothpick um, you're gonna wrap the same way that you did I always start in the wrong spot. So away from you, wrap down the toothpick, um, about half of the toothpick. Then you're gonna come back up the toothpick. All right, and you see we're making this little, little cheese doodle shape. You can go back down the toothpick and then back up. So now I have something that's the width of my pinky, really. And then uh, we're gonna felt it on the toothpick a little bit. So take that needle, felt it on the toothpick. You wanna make sure when you're felting onto your felting surface that you're moving your work cause it will get caught. Oh, there's supposed to be a piece of craft felt on here. You guys will get craft felt. Um, I'll add that in <laughs> at the beginning, um, that if you put craft felt on it, it, uh, in the corresponding color, you will be able to, what does he want, yo? Something about the heat. All right. I can't do it right now. Okay. So I'm going to poke, 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 poke. And notice how I'm doing this. Right? It's just like you're working with Sculpey or something. You can roll it and it will make the shape that you want. And these fringy bits are perfect because that's how we're going to shape it. Uh, I mean, not shape it, attach it to the body. Um, so we have this fringy bit here and this fringy bit here. And it's not over felted, so it will be easier to attach to the body when everything's sort of fluffy, right? So I'm going to slide that off, lay it down on my felting surface and the tip of the leg is this part and the part that we attach the body is the fringy part. I think I made that kind of clear with what I just said but whatever. 
And I'm going to poke, 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 up into the end of the leg to round it out so we get this little cute. Right? And that's the first thing I'm going to do. And then I'm going to stab from all directions. See how it's sort of picking up the color? Uh, if you cover your felting surface with the felt sheet, then you won't pick up any of the wool from your felting surface and the wool from your... This is blurry. All right, so I'm just gonna keep stabbing. If you're nervous about poking your fingers, you can use your other toothpick to hold this in place. Uh, you can get finger guards. Um, I find them really cumbersome and annoying. So I prefer not to use them. All right, got my leg. I'm just rolling it in my hand like that. Um, and then you can sort of hold it up and see, do you want the, to be longer? Do you want them to curl way up? If you want them to curl way up and you want it to be longer, you can take even more and sort of build it up. Um, it's really narrow here, so I'm going to take a, one of my, about half of one of my four inch pieces, and then I'm just going to wrap around the top of that leg so we get a nice gradual transition from the, um, it's skinny at the tip and then wider where it attaches to the body. So you want to make sure that you don't have, I don't know, an anemic leg, skinny leg up at the top. He needs nutrients. All right, so I'm finding that is a little better. Noodle boy. <laughs> There's one. I'm gonna do another one on camera. So taking one of those pieces, holding with my thumb, wrapping up to the end of the toothpick wrapping back down at an angle to where you started, wrapping back up at an angle crisscross motion till you sort of run out, and taking that fringy bit and just going around with it, around and around and around till it sort of disappears and holds it together. Felting it a little bit. This one was kind of skinny. Again, use your judgment if you need more wool, then get more wool. But again, remind, friendly reminder that usually people use too much. All right, how big is that? Same as my other one. Felt it a little. You want those wraps nice and tight and an and easy way to, you could twist the toothpick in your fingers like this to make sure that it's tight. Okay, pull that off. And then again, Felting the top. Oops, see how I almost poked myself? You know, it's just the name of the game. No pain, no gain, especially with this. It's, uh, it can be really painful. <laughs> if I haven't deterred you <laughs> enough, you can stab yourself. It takes forever. <laughs> you have to make eight legs. Seven, whatever I said, takes forever. Eons. All right. And voila, there you've got two. You can even start to curve them up once it's firm enough. Look, you can curve that bad boy up. And if you stab where you bent it, uh, it will hold its shape. Okay. So that's it for that. Um, I'll be back or something in a little bit. I keep saying I'll be back in a little bit, but you won't know that because I'm already here. And then it's immediately going to transition to the next. Anyway, you get what I mean. Be back soon. Bye. <laughs> Okay, and we're back. Um, 
Sorry for the change in scenery. I was just trying to get it so I wasn't hitting these cords anymore and that maybe you could see me a little bit better. But here's my legs. <laughs> Oops. It's raining legs. <laughs> so dumb. Okay, so here they are. Little cheese doodles with kind of an upward swing to some of them. And they all have a fuzzy end and a blunt end. Um... Again, you only had four pieces initially, so you probably, I mean, hopefully had to... Where'd the rest of my wool go? Oh my goodness, this is always happening to me. Ooh! <laughs> Yo, where is it at? Okay. So, you had to pull off another four-inch piece and then split that into four, and then maybe even use a little bit extra. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, I mean, regardless of whether or not this video is well made, <laughs> I feel like the information that I've given you is valuable enough that you um, can endure it, right? <laughs> okay, so here's my uh, thing, thingle. This is what I have left, my thingle. Uh, plenty of fiber left. You need probably about half this much for the ears maybe even less you could do really big eared octopus you could go get dumbo vibes dumbo octopus vibes you could add more to this um center structure but you do need about half of this for the um ears and then um uh, a decent amount of fiber just to get your legs attached properly uh, and you'll see what i mean in a moment Okay, so I was going to get the craft felt to put over this, but I yet again forgot. So um, just know that putting your craft felt over this would be <laughs> ideal because you can see how there's blue in it now. So when you went to make something else, your new project might pick up that blue fiber. That's the only downside really with um, wool felting pads. Uh, I mean, they all they all kind of pick up the fiber, so I recommend just craft felt over top. I wouldn't use wool felt. You would end up felting the wool felt to your surface. Um, and then, I mean, you know, you could just always keep adding if it was all wool felt. I don't know. It's up to you. But um, I usually like to just change the fel craft felt out to correspond with the color that I'm using. That way you preserve the longevity of your surface. Felting with this, this will depress because it's uh, so depressed. Because it's 2023. It's just depressing now. <laughs> that may be true, but <laughs> this will also be depressed, right? Over time, as you felt with it, that's okay. It's supposed to do that. Eventually, it will stop. All right, um, it's just all wool, so it's going to get flat the more you stab it. Okay. Got my legs. Got my thumb. He's stuck in his thumb and he pulled out a plum. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. I'm going to teach you how to do this now <laughs> instead of making my really bad jokes. All right, so here's the body part. Here's the leg part. So let's take our first leg and we're going to attach it to the body. So he's going to sit like this. Remember where our face is, the part that we firmed up a little bit. And this guy is just going to attach just like that. Right? So I, what I like to do is I'll take this floof and pull it apart a little bit. That way you get floof in all directions. So you can t attach all the way around. I'm going to line up my little leg and then I kind of take the, um, I don't kind of take, <laughs> I take the fringe and I'm going to roll it up over that. But first I'm going to attach this leg to the body. So the soft bit goes here, a little bit above the base of the figure. 
and then you're gonna just stab directly in if you don't stab enough you can rip that leg right off all right so stab in a good bit till it starts to blend in with the body then you're gonna take whatever you can underneath and sh and roll it up over like a little taco shell around the base of the leg and sort of felt in all directions underneath you want to felt up top you want to felt to the side you want to felt inside outwards right the more directions you stab in the more secure and smooth the transition to your leg is going to be right so see i can i'm i'm starting to not be able to pull it off you don't want to yank on your leg like that i'm just trying to show you you know you really want to attach it okay so that's on there but it looks mad weird <laughs> right it's a harsh kind of angle as opposed to this smooth and gradual transition from here to the body right so that's the goal i am going to take i'm going to pull i have about um 12 14 inches left so i'm going to pull that in half that's going to be for my ears and then i'm just going to use up the rest of this for attaching my leg so i'm just grabbing from the middle side and pulling some off a real small amount look how thin that is right you can see right through to my hand this is too thick right it's just this wispy bit and you're going to start on the body with the fringy bits see how i'm smoothing that in you're going to go underneath the leg and return to the body so that it's just wrapping it around once and then returning to the body and the ends cross at the top and then they loop like a little little cradle for the leg underneath and then now i'm going to stab all of that in this will take some time this is where the real sculpting happens so it's gonna take a while for you to get it smooth but my recommendation is to just start with one do your best get it on there and then um, move on to the next leg and then once they're all kind of on there you can really start to worry about each piece and how it's looking and you can see the overall structure of the piece and where you need to do more work where you need to do less work and it's all gonna be relative to your sculpture some legs may be easy to put on some legs might be hard to put on uh, some might be too short so you add more uh, if it's too long you stab more you don't want to do one of these if you can help it i've had to cut heads off and things like that um it, it does happen but what happens when you cut the fiber i can actually show you when you cut the fiber you break it right so the barbs the structure of the fiber gets destroyed pretty much you can't it's a lot harder to stab this see nothing's really happening than to stab this all right so cutting is sometimes unavoidable but uh if you want something to be smaller stab it more if you want something to be bigger, obviously you would add more on top. So I'm putting on my second leg. A little bit off from the first. Taking the other half of that wispy bit that we pulled off. Starting on the body. Wrapping around the base of the leg and then back up onto the body towards the other side. And then the fiber should cross in the middle. And then you got your little leg hammock underneath. And you're gonna stab all around. All around, all different angles. Get that fiber on there. 
And these fringy bits that you're adding to the top from each of those pieces, they'll become smooth. Uh, they'll, they'll smooth out your whole octopus. So any, any lines or um, things that are lumpy, you can use these extra bits to make it nicer. I would stab this more, but um, I don't want to be here all day, so it's really um, up to you how much you want to stab it. I would definitely st work on this more. This project should take you um, three hours, maybe, if you're just starting out. I can make one of these in about an hour and a half. So next leg, floofy bit. If you don't have a floofy bit, like this one's kind of blunt, blunted, just tease this out. And you can always take a little bit extra fiber, stab that into the leg, and then use. You can also just try slapping it on, seeing what'll happen. But you have to do more work. If there's no fringe, you're definitely going to be doing more work. Okay, this is the last one I'm going to do on camera. So I've got this little, a little bit. Oh, I guess I attached four. Down, around. And you can do this loop more than once. You should have plenty of fiber left. Um, if you don't have a lot of fiber left or it's looking kind of sketchy, then you went too much in the body portion. Um, so. By the time you're done with the body, you should have... I'll watch this video maybe before you start making it too. It's a great time to tell you right we're basically done so we're gonna keep going around um, making sure that the rest of the legs are sort of equidistant to each other and and then I'll be back in a minute okay bye so I am putting on my last leg and I wanted you guys to see if your leg is really skinny at the top, you can go around twice. So taking that little strip, wrapping it around once, then wrapping it around again, as opposed to just returning to the body. So you can wrap it as pretty much as many times as you need to get um, the transition sort of smooth and seamless. And then felt the fringe in and see how I'm kind of, I'll take the fringe and move it with my needle. A lot of people don't recommend dragging the needle across the surface. Uh, you'll break your needle. But I always, always drag my needle. Um, it was one of the worst pieces of advice that I ever got, in my opinion. See how you have this line here? Like if you just gently move that fiber, pick that fiber up with the tip of your needle and move it down. Um, yeah, you will break your needle, all right? That's, you're just gonna break your needle. You're gonna break them, you're gonna bend them. Uh, there's nothing you can do. Just buy a bunch um, and then it won't matter, <laughs> right? If you really do this, you're gonna have hundreds on hand. If you really end up doing this, I would say if you're, you know, we're almost done with our octopus. So eventually the needles will wear out and they become noticeably dull and you have to throw them away anyway. You know, it's just the name of the game. I move the fiber all the time with my needle. Um, say, don't drag it. Don't drag it. I'm always going to be dragging it. <laughs> right? So... There's a little split here where that I'm not a fan of. Um, you could leave that. It's not like anyone's going to be scrutinizing your work, right? But I can be quite the perfectionist when it comes to 
So just taking little bits and wrapping them around the base and then filling in any gaps. You want to felt it so the bottom becomes completely smooth, right? And then you want to felt it so the top becomes completely smooth. See how you can't even tell. Um, if you have anything unsightly, just laying a little brush stroke of fiber over it and then felting it down in. You can use a reverse needle. I'm not going to get into that now. But, um, yeah. So, I felt this more. I'm not going to because um, I want to get these ears on. I'm feeling sleepy. I don't know. It's so cold. I've got these heated unicorn slippers and I need to put them on. Right now I've just got my... <sighs> Alright, so octopus, voila. Um, his legs are wonky, so a good way to reshape them is, again, just stab down from the top. You want them to curl up. Stabbing down from the top. Can you guys see that? Let me get more in the middle. Down from the top. Stabbing in so they're sh they shrink down a bit into the body. Right? Just stab some more. Stab in all directions. Experiment, you know? It's the only way you're gonna really learn. And you can move them, right? So you can move it into one shape and then stab in the direction that would help the fiber to re retain the shape. Uh-oh, phone's dying. Hold on. So, ears, um, you go over there. Our ears are going to be a little bit different than everything we've done so far. So I'm going to take two one inch chunks pretty much. So wherever you can pull it apart, that's kind of where you want to get it. There's a little one inch chunk. I've got another one inch chunk. Um, I hate doing the ears at the same time. I always do one half of the face of the thing that I'm making and then uh, I have such a hard time getting the other side to match making the ears the same. Whereas if I just did them at the same time, like I'm gonna show you with the same, you could even weigh this. I think that's a little extra, but you just want it to be vaguely the same amount of fiber. That is what is important. All right, so I need to find my phone charger, but let's see if I can get through these ears real quick first. We are going to draw the shape um, with the needle. So we're looking at this. Here's my diagrams. Diagram. Alright, so Kim's ears look like this, but you can do them however you want. I got I put I always put them in a different spot. Like these ones are right on top. These ones are fo more forward. So the way you position them really kind of gives the octopus personality um, as well as the face. So the ears are important where you put them. Uh, but they all kind of look the same shape. So this is the shape we're going to draw. All right. Simple, right? So I'm taking my needle. I am going to stab that shape in just like I'm drawing it with the pen and it'll stick to the mat. So draw that in, see how I've drawn it. And then you're gonna take the fiber, roll it down, roll it down towards the middle, and then you can roll it with your fingers, roll it down towards the middle. Stab it all in. You want to peel it up so it do you don't felt it to your surface. Flip it over. P 
heal it up. You can get a punch tool if you want. I'm not going to go too into the tools. I'm going to do a separate tools video probably. There's lots of tools. Pull it up. Flip it over. And this can get real dangerous. But I do it all the time. You want it to be nice and firm and see how now this is the shape yeah so let's do the other one draw the shape in that you want to achieve roll the fiber down towards the middle felt it a little bit Peel it up off the mat. Stabbing in from the edges to get the edges felted. Um, you could roll it in a little more if it kind of goes all loosey-goosey on you. And I'm going to stab from the top. This, you will stab yourself if you do this. But that's just out. See, I just did. <laughs> Ow. A uh, uh, uh. little bit of DNA in everything that I make. Okay. Look at them. Are they the same size? No. So this is why. Before you attach, get them right. Ow. <laughs> I'm not afraid of the needle anymore. I've been doing this for almost seven years now. So, you know, stabbing is just, it's just what happens. There are countless finger protectors you can use. I just can't stand any of them. All right, so similar shape. The more you stab, the better it'll get. Punch tool has five needles in it. I don't, I can't get mine right now, but um, maybe when I, when we switch the face, I can show you. All right, so here we've got two, good enough. Um, I'm gonna make it like we did in the picture. So I'm gonna find that face area again. And this, the face area may change. All you have to do is stab it a little more. I think I like how this looks. And we've got our fringy bit, right? And if you want a little fold to your ear, you can fold it in half and a little and lay it on. Um, you can lay it on like that. Right? So you can lay it. I've done them so their ears are right on top. So play around. Do, you know, what you want. Try things. If you mess up, you know, this stuff is... Felting is super forgiving, other than repeatedly impaling your digits. <laughs> you can rip this right off and move it. You, It's not like painting where, you know, you make a mistake and then you have to spend an hour trying to fix it. Just rip it off, cut it off, add more. I don't know. I love it so much. And you can make anything, right? So now I'm going to stab this fringe in. And you can see where I folded it, right? There's a little bit under here. Oh, he's cute. We, we could give him some real mouse ears. Right? And just stab that in. And then same for the other side. Arrange that how you want it. If, you, if you're having trouble getting it on, um, you can, you, and you want it to have a little crease in the center, you can lay it on your pad and fold it and then stab that part in first so it maintains the shape that you want. And then position that on the head. Stab it in. Right, you get the idea. I'm gonna just keep stabbing till all the fringe is gone. And um, you really want it to be flat 
you don't want this extra stuff. So there's tools with multiple needles in them. Um, I, of course, don't have mine at this table. I wanted it to kind of be like um, you guys. I have just what you guys have. I have just what you need, right? You don't need a lot to felt. Uh, you can take it anywhere. It's just versatile in so many ways. Versatile. I said that right. Right? Oh, he's going to be cute. Yeah. I would stab this more. But at the risk of having you guys fall asleep. I can see the difference. This, one, this guy's still a little fuzzy. He could, he could use some work, but... Um, you really want it nice. Nice and smooth. And the only way you get it smooth is by stabbing. So, happy stabbing. Okay, so we lost a little bit of light because I had to use my block to plug my phone in. And one of the ring lights I was using is no longer plugged in. But... <laughs> Listen, I am technologically inept, okay? There's a lot of um, issues that I have encountered in the making of this video. Uh, something as simple as, you know, putting the cords not directly in front of my hands and feet. That would have been a great addition to <laughs> this. But I put this on the table it's soft and cute, so that's something that I'm good at. <laughs> Laying hairy cloths down. It's the vibe, it's a moment. Right. Okay, so let's finish this guy up. I stabbed it a little bit more off camera. But um, definitely would do a lot more sculpting with this guy. Um, he's really cute, though. I like the ears, the way that I put them. Um, you can see how it changes. These guys don't have faces yet, but you can really see how the ears change their personality. Like, this guy's a little droopier. He's so cute all the way down. And then this guy's, like, on the, right on the top. He's like, you could even, like, curl him up like a little little devil or something I don't know there's the ears are just ugh, the ears make the so cute um anyway now I am going to show you guys how to do the face so it's quite simple oh I wanted to show you um what I was talking about earlier so this is a punch tool it has five needles one of them is broken in there but you put five needles in that and there's a locking mechanism, so, and then if you're doing anything flat, you would stab like that. And it, it's really good for making ears, right? And then here is something, uh, here's the clover pen tool. You can get this, you can get this at Michael's for 15 bucks. They sell them. They have really small felting sections at Michael's and Joanne's. Um, they're super small, uh, cause apparently nobody cares, but we do now, right? I do. <laughs> I care. Yep. But here you can, um, see the needles go in there. I usually work with two, but you can put up to three in there. I have a gun, a felting gun. It has, uh, five needles in it. Um, it's a motorized 3D printed gun. Um, that is good for a lot of things. It makes your projects really smooth. Um, but I wouldn't invest in something like that until you're deep in it, right? So, I want to always put the eyes in first. The eyes are the windows of the soul. The eyes are also the soul of the octopus, right? So, I'm thinking right here and um, you can use your toothpick for this I'm gonna get my eyes out these ends are really really long so I would get a pair of wire cutters and probably snip them down but I leave them long for you guys so that way they won't fall out of the thingamabobber there what am I even saying 
Um, so <laughs> take the toothpick and I'm going to just poke it in and go just stab in and out until you have a noticeable hole. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I can. And then you can try your eye on for size. Push it in there. See how that's looking. It's pretty cute. Um, I'm going to put it in on the other side. Your eyes get me far apart. We'll do this guy a little further apart than I usually would. I don't glue them in until the very end. Um, just a little dab of, oops, super glue on the end. See how it gets really hard to put in when it's super long like that. So I would definitely cut that down with some wire cutters when you're ready to put it in. Especially, you really want to make a nice, nice, um, smooth hole when you um, are actually going to glue them in. Otherwise, it'll get stuck. Um, so definitely cut down the back of the eye. And then, um, you know what, I'm not going to talk about it. I'll just show you guys. My wire cutters are... Okay. Um, technical difficulties. Hold on one moment. We'll just do it all. Anyway, I'm cutting this, these, um, down to about this long. And then when, at the very end, we'll glue them in. I don't want to glue them in yet just because you never know things might move around stuff's gonna go down um, when you do the face so we just don't know if that's if this is gonna be the final placement for the eyes oh they're so far apart I love that but these guys this guy's as close together um, so you can see that I haven't stabbed this enough, so it's getting, it's kind of hard to um, get everything together, but, oh, cute. Okay, everyone see him? So now I'm going to do the mouth. Um, so you have a little bit of black, and you want to get that cheeky color now. And I'm going to just make sure that this is firm enough so you can really <laughs> his eyeball is falling out because that part's not squishy enough all right so we really want to get it firm enough and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw that so you could do a cute little three mouth you could do um a, a little just a little surprised o mouth that's really cute. I'm just going to show you how to do the upside down V, little carrot mouth. And I like to do it right in between the eyes, but your placement might be a little different. So first is I use all out. So first I'm going to draw it in. Kind of. So just get the general shape. It's the part where you want to be kind of careful with your needle because... This is where it'll break. See how mine's bending a little bit? All right, so you can sort of see where it's gonna be. I did it a little off center. So this would definitely be a case of like, maybe I'll move this eye over um, when I finally got it in. Or if you want to, you can just, to erase it, you can kind of pull out from, this, from the middle and then um, move it over or add more fiber on and cover up what you just did. But we're gonna just roll with it. This is way more than you would ever, ever need for this project, but, um, you know, you literally see this little fluffy, floofy bit there. You're just going to take that. Bye. You can save that for something else, right? So, and this might take a couple tries. So I'm going to roll it so I get this skinny, skinny line. And this would even be too much, so I'm going to take half of that off. The more you roll it, the harder it is to pull apart. Um, and I am probably going to fold it in half to thicken it up. So I have an inch 
long piece, uh, maybe a little longer. You could even fold it again. And then this is kind of what you want to work with. Even that could be a little thick. The thing about it is, is part, parts of it will disappear into the felt um, as you stab it on. So I'm going to hold it in that little depression and I'm just going to stab that shape in. The idea is that you're drawing what you want with the fiber. Oh, he's derpy. <laughs> so cute though. Aw, I love you. I'm definitely gonna work on this more. Um, if you want to, you can take whatever's around the mouth and use that to sort of draw as well. All right, see I'm taking the blue underneath, poking that up, and that's just giving me a cleaner, cleaner line. This might take a few tries. If you get too depressed in here, <laughs> so depressed just take whatever extra fiber you have slap it on there felt over it you may even want to pull the black out first that way it doesn't come up through and just um try again just keep trying until you get the um shape that you want okay um i like this i might move that eye over like i said so taking my toothpick, my dowel, whatever, and then just trying that on for size. So Oops, that's so fiddly. Trying that on for size. Yeah, that looks better. So cute. Okay, I can glue them in. If you want them angry, you could add a brow. Um... Their faces are simple, but they're never alike, right? They're never... Look, he looks mad. I love that. I really kind of want a mad one. I love doing grumpy things. All right. So, glue. I'm going to glue these eyes in. Once you... When you put them in, and then you take them out again... You need to reiterate the hole because the wool is going to come up with the pin and it will erase the hole that you had. So you really want to really, really, really get those. Look, they disappeared. It's such a pain. This is, I, I just can't, I mean, I love every part of this, but sometimes putting these eyes in, uh, so I'm going to put a little bit of this stupid glue on the end and then just press it in to the hole, hold and release. And my hole was good enough that it didn't get stuck get stuck just rip it out girl who can't even stand up right okay and then this might need more stabbing it'll sometimes move after the fact you might need to stab it more so cute I love these ears all right you put a little bow on that oh so many things you could do cheeks the last bit so you're gonna take this so I wanted to give you a different kind of fiber these are locks when I pull when you pull them apart they get really fuzzy I'm not exactly sure what sheep these are from 
but um, it's really floofy and nice and you can kind of see the structure of the lock. Uh, these are hand dyed by the lady who shears the sheep, so super cute. I pulled off just a, just a little bit. It's such a small amount. You could even split that in half. So small, right? And then I'm going to roll it up a little. You can um, put it on the end of your needle like that, or you can just put it on the face. But I'm going to go right under that eye and just stab that circle in. You could keep the cheek little like that, or you could go bigger. So either you can put it on the end of your needle or you can lay it on. And you want to just keep that circular shape. Super easy, right? I'm going to get another little bit. Roll it in my finger. I pull off whatever extra. And then, see, it sort of disappears into the felt. So you may want to get a little more, match them up. Right? But then... That's it. You've got your octopus. I would definitely work on this more. I'm definitely going to work on him more. Um, you can add any embellishments that you want. And yeah, that's how to make an octopus. Yay! I think that's it.